Okay, hello and welcome back to the Land Rover Toolbox videos. In the last video, we removed the bearings out of the housings. If you missed this video, then click on the icon below in the right hand lower corner and that will take you through onto the video so you'll be able to see how to strip this before we go ahead and refit it. Basically, the rear housing is easier than the front housing, so we're not going to show you how to put this back together. It's quite easy, so basically, we're going to concentrate on the front housing and the diff locker. However, just remember, when you fit this component, make sure you get the worm gear back around the right way. The front housing also is a bearing race carrier, and you can see this here. This is um, shimmed up underneath this to... Um, set the right preload on the bearing for the uh, diff carrier. We won't be doing this diff carrier just yet because we're looking for something stronger that we can fit into the differential, the centre differential unit. So bear with us a um, couple of months and we'll have something we can show you. <laughs> then with the front housing basically you're going to need something like a socket that will fit inside the nose cone so when we push the bearing into it it will not jam up on the casing Land Rover recommend heating the casing to 100 degrees centigrade and yes this is a cooker right so you need to heat the casing up first evenly before you go ahead and push the bearing in so what we have is the use of a cooker or the oven and set on 100 degrees for about 20 minutes until the casing is all the way warm. Right, so once it's warm, we're doing both casings at the same time, we can go ahead and fit it on the press rather promptly and put the bearing in. Just remember that 100 degrees centigrade on a piece of metal casing is going to be hot, so just be aware that you could get yourself burnt. Next thing to do is push the bearing into place. It actually doesn't take much pressure to push the bearing into this housing. Once it's cool, you can then check that the groove there will accept the circlip. Right, so the circlip's been fitted, as you can see here on the casing. This will retain the bearing. You could also use the press to push the clip in gently until it clicks into the groove, like so. And then you're ready to put the shaft back into place. Right, so remember there is a spacer on this and it does have a bevel on it. And remember which way that went round. You can push this in with a press gently or you could use a very soft headed hammer and knock it down. Okay, it's not a very tight interference fit. Uh, just be aware, you can see on the table that all the components are jumping about when I'm doing this. But you hammer it down until it bottoms out okay so you have the shaft there the flange will hold this against the bearing very tightly once you've talked it up can you hear the difference in bearing noise right so the dog clutch for the uh, diff lock you're going to see here in this illustration up in the corner number 14 it has a chamfer on one edge make sure this face towards the back Right, so we'll fit this into place. There's no need for oil at this present time. We then fit the selector fork and the selector rod into the housing. It would be wise to use lubrication as such what would be used in the uh, gearbox, which will be EP90. Uh, lubricate the shaft and then you can push it through the selector fork. At this point, the detent plunger is not fitted, so... Um, like here I'm using a soft hammer, just tap it through until it meets the housing on the other side. Okay, it's like that. So basically the next thing to do is to set the selector shaft so the shaft is in the right place for the clips to fit in where the selector fork is. And again we're using a screwdriver or something to pull back the spring and drop the clips into place like so. The cups will go towards the spring to retain the spring. Once they're in there and home, they can't come out. Right, so the detent plunger, which is ball bearing, spring and cap, I'll drop a little bit of oil into where it's going to be housed, put the ball bearing in and then the spring. 
that fits into place like so make sure it's home and then with the cap what we're going to use is some thread lock thread lock the threads on the detent plunger cap okay now this will hold it into place you do not want to ram this tight the idea is to get the right load onto the uh, ball bearing so the selection is smooth and uh, not hard to do so i'm just screwing it up to feel resistance and then we can then check the operation of it so with the selector okay the detent is in place and it's basically assembled i'm using a pair of mole grips not grip to the thread now when you put the diff lock in you'll notice that it won't drop in straight away this is fairly normal the teeth have to align with the dog clutch on the shaft before the spring will push the selector into place now you have to check this before you assemble it make sure it's working properly you see how it operates, the lever operates the rod, okay, the spring will put the pressure on and basically snap it into place. Right, now what I need to do also is make sure that this detent is in uh, working order. If the detent is too tight it will wear the components, it will be stiff to drop in. If it's too loose it will feel too loose. When you're happy with your detent, you can go ahead and lubricate the moving parts or the um, contact areas. And the shaft I'm lubricating with EP90 oil because that's what the uh, gearbox is using, or should I say the transfer box is using. At this point as well, before we fit the seal, we can lavishly lash some EP oil onto the bearing as well and work it in. This will make sure it has the best start in life when you first start it up. Okay, so the seal lip will be lubricated as well with EP oil or a little bit of grease. And a little trick here is to use the flange. Okay, this actually has an edge cut out for the, the raised lip on the other side. And just tap it into place. Okay, you can then knock it just below the surface of the edge with a socket, for instance. Making sure you do not damage or distort the seal. Right, so with the flange it's painted, however we do not paint the face where it mates to the prop shaft. This will ensure that the prop shaft doesn't come loose when you're driving. Okay, so the flange is serviceable and where the seal runs is fine. The prop shaft bolts are captive and there's a mud shield which goes around this way. This can be tapped into place. You'll also see some green liquid on there which is bearing lock just to help it stay in place so it doesn't come loose and rattle or have a tin rattle. Right, so that's in place. I'll just clean the bearing lock off the face and I can then fit this flange. Okay, so we have a felt washer in the kit and with the flange fitted, the felt washer then goes in to stop oil leaking through the splines, like so. So that's the first one that goes into place. You then have a large washer and a new nylock nut. Okay, so the torque wrench setting is on the screen and also in addition for American friends. Don't skimp at this stage because if the nut becomes loose, you will find that it will cause a lot more damage than what you want to pay for. Right, so the housing's done, that can be fitted. You want to make sure that the bearing is oiled on the diff carrier okay this is the cent diff, center diff carrier you have a new gasket there this is a carrier for the bearing the preload has already been set by shims so theoretically if a gasket come off a gasket goes back on the preload will be set on the uh, gearing shaft okay it does take a little bit to drop into place. Don't struggle with it. Basically, you have splines that you have to line up and you will realize that the selector shaft has to go into a slot as well. So um, take it easy. It will drop into place. It takes a little bit of a time sometimes, like this one has. Using force may well cause damage and using a soft hammer to just tap it to um, convince it it needs to go into place is possibly the way to go these can be uh, a little bit difficult at times this one's been on and off a couple of times and it does fit into place nicely like so without resorting to a large hammer right so the next thing to do you have to thread lock all set screws um, with some thread lock and then tighten to 25 newton meters 
basically you'll do the first torque and then go round again and make sure the torque is even around the whole case. The next thing to fit will be the diff lock warning lamp switch and we have a new one here and the best way to test this is with set on a continuity tester, press the plunger and see what happens. Okay, that works. We then fit it into the slot. This also has a sealant to make sure it doesn't leak out of um, the switch. And basically what we're doing is screwing it in until it makes contact and you can see whether it's working or not by using the alarm on a multimeter. Okay, once that's right, half a turn in and then tighten off the lock nut. Make sure you use a sealant. The uh, Land Rover recommended one is on the screen. Do not use thread lock and nip up the lock nut. Okay, so after then, basically what we'll do is check the contacts. You could use a light bulb connected to a battery. You're just basically making sure that there's continuity here when the diff lock switch is in. Okay, so that's done. The earth for the switch is bolted to the casing. The uh, top high-low selector is loose and it will move like this until you fit it into place. You would have replaced the O-ring. So the next thing to do is make sure your slot is in the right place, a grease a gasket and uh, fit it on nicely. This will make sure it doesn't move about. And again, thread lock all set screws and tighten to 25 newton meters evenly. Okay, so the earth is just a bit of cable with a spade terminal and a ring terminal on the other end. Ensure that this has continuity. What you'll need to do next is to make sure that the high-low lever will operate. Okay, so you have your dog clutch um, on this set of gears and it will move one way, lock it onto high gear, move it the other way, it will lock onto the other gear. And you might well have to use a little bit of gentle persuasion, not too much, to get it to move over. Don't forget this is not synchromeshed at all, so you'll have to make sure that the dog teeth are in line. Now this is set in the neutral position, we'll move the lever, get the teeth lined up and it will slide into place like so. Easy, huh? If there's problems then you'll have to find out why it's not locking. Uh, there shouldn't be any reason you have problems with reassembling this. Now again on uh, this cover plate we have a greased gasket, like so, into place. Now this is the cover plate, exactly like the sump. You'll see that it has a rib all the way around it. This is here to assist with making sure that the oil does not leak through. If this bead is damaged in any way, then the cover plate will need replacing. Otherwise, you'll find that you'll have a leak in a place you can't get to very easily. However, you can see on the gasket of the sump of the transfer box how the bead works to uh, split the gasket slightly. When you do the some make sure again that the bead is in good condition otherwise replace it okay so this is the uh, transfer box sump best way to clean and get into the awkward recesses is with a wire brush this way the bead will not be damaged going back to our diff lock cover plate again these are m8 bolts so lightly thread lock all set screws and tightened to 25 newton meters evenly Okay, so the bear mark gasket set BR3292 has seals in it as well. So we can go ahead and fit the seal, which is the mating of the gearbox to the transfer box.